Welcome to the Engineering Talent Awards, the nominee interviews. These are brought to you by Equal Engineers, and uh, we are an organization focused on improving the diversity and inclusion of the engineering industry. And you can find out more about what we do on our website, so do go over and take a look. Now, this is a series of interviews brought to you by myself, Fayon Dixon, and David Purgy. And we are in discussion with those who have been nominated at this year's awards. Um, the awards, of course, were due to take place in April, but due to the corona pandemic, they are now scheduled for the near future. <laughs> So um, we do invite you to send any questions that you may have or any need for any technical support via the Q&A facility. Um, Frasier, our IT wizard, is there to support you. So um, just go over there if you need any help. And the link to this webinar and all of our others will be available on our website. So do look out for them and share, share, share. It's a gift, share. So um, I'm here today talking to women in engineering and allies at Jaguar Land Rover, Isabel Ashworth, who is senior CAE engineer, and Katie Risby, who is package zone leader from Jaguar Land Rover, JLR, if you please. And they've been nominated for Employee Network of the Year Award. Welcome, Katie. Welcome, Isabel. How are you doing? Hiya. Thanks for having us. How are you? I'm absolutely fantastic. Sun's out. I'm in my garden. It's all good. Very, very happy. And so excited to to be speaking to people who are working in my hometown of Coventry. Um, I've not been there for months to see my mum and my family, so I'm really missing it. So how are you guys? How's lockdown for you, Isabel? It's good. It's been very busy. Um, obviously missing people a lot, but we've been trying to get out a bit more after the netball season was sadly cancelled. So we've been out running a bit more. See how it goes. Yeah. What position do you play in netball? I'm a goal defence. Oh, yeah. I was always centre, you know, nice. and then I could just be everywhere apart from the team, and then that was good for me. Oh, I love netball. I can't, get, I can't wait to get back to all of those wonderful sports. And what about you, Katie? Yeah, really busy as well. I actually can't believe it's nearly the end of June. Um, making the most of the time at home to spend some time on our classic camper van we bought last year. So we've just taken the engine out. So. Ooh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. So where are you going to go as soon as you can? Uh, well, it's 50 years old, so probably sticking to an hour radius of this area, to be honest. Rugby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could, you make it, could you make it to rugby, do you think? We, I think we could make it to rugby. Fantastic. And um, can I ask you both, do you think the way that you're working um, now will change how you work in the future for your company? Yeah, I think for sure there's been a much more focus on online tool sets. We've been encouraged to work smarter, work flexibly for many years now. But I think the pandemic has sadly forced a lot of teams to make that jump a lot more quickly than they wanted to maybe. Um, and it's really showed some of the benefits and we've already started discussing the things that we can keep with like the new normal when things go back. Yeah, so for my department, um, we've not really worked from home before this. So it's been quite a change, but I'm actually really impressed with how we've coped. Um, meetings are running seamlessly. I'd say the main thing we're missing is because we're to do with how occupants sit in the vehicles and how you actually experience the vehicle. We're missing being able to get two cars side by side and actually get in and out of vehicles. That's the bit we're mainly missing from home. Right. But it is just incredible how we're all adapting so well. I mean, we're, we're, we're amazing, aren't we? And more. So let's get on to the interview proper now. So I guess I want to know, you know, when did you know engineering was a career for you? I fell into it. Um, I studied physics at university and hadn't really looked at engineering before then if I'm totally honest but I started having a love for fluid dynamics and I came across Jaguar Land Rover at Careers Fair um, and I recognised them my dad's driven discoveries since I was very little um, 
and so I kind of recognised the picture in the background of the careers fair and went and started chatting to them and the rest is kind of history after that. Cool, cool, cool. It's funny, isn't it? How sometimes they say in life, the thing that you need most is right underneath your nose. We go sort of searching over here, we go over there, we go over there. There it was, right where you didn't even notice. Amazing. And what about you, Katie? So I guess similar to Isabel, really. I'd never really considered a career in engineering, which seems bizarre because looking at the subjects I've studied the whole way through school, it always was the career that I should have ended up in. Um, it was a late realisation during my A-levels that it was an option and sort of immediately switched plans to go and apply for mechanical engineering degrees. Wonderful, I love that. And, you know, there is just so much variety out there. So you could have gone either way. But I want to hear about your role. So on an average week for you, Isabel, if there's such a thing, <laughs> um, you know, what, what's your week look like? So my role is a lot of virtual testing. Um, I test the climate systems of all of our future products. Um, that's what our team does. And we're kind of virtually looking at how the airflow passes through the ducting, how the customers are feeling, if they're hot, if they're cold, flow patterns onto windscreens and glass and all of that, but kind of upfront in the virtual simulation world. So I spend a lot of time at a computer or chatting to the other lead engineers, trying to make the best system we can do, kind of using the analysis results to chop and change. And it's a very long iterative process, but it's really rewarding at the end of it. Amazing. And what about you, Katie? So um, I work in vehicle package engineering. So we actually work cross-functionally. So we get involved with all areas of the vehicle. So for me personally, I work in interior packaging, looking at things that improve the occupant's experience within the car. So how you improve roominess, what's the best posture. So it's a lot of talking to a lot of different departments and kind of a mediating role, trying to get the best balance for our customers. Mm. I'm just looking at the questions um, because oh, they're a lively bunch already. <laughs> I love that. So do get those questions coming in. And just to say from um, Hinein Said, he says, happy International Women's Day, everyone. Happy engineering, obviously, uh, Women's Day. So are there any celebrations going on kind of virtually for you guys? We've actually just had one as a networking lunch event um, that the network put on, uh, looking at kind of reflection now that we've got to that June point in the year um, to have a bit of an informal catch up. We try and do these once a month, actually. So this is our June celebration that happens to align. It's just quite nice talking about shape the world and what you've done so far this year, how you might progress into the next year and things like that. Wonderful, wonderful. That sounds really lovely. So can you tell me, if it's not a secret, <laughs> what are you currently working on? Um, so we've got some top secret future products coming out that are really exciting that we're working on a lot of the time. Um, but I can tell you what I'm kind of working on method development in the background as well. So that's the kind of making our current methodologies a bit more robust, a bit more automated, um, really trying to improve our virtual capability. Um, so for me, it's looking at the vehicle interiors again. So especially working from home, we're really reliant on our virtual tool sets to make sure that we're predicting customer posture and experiences without being able to actually get into physical vehicles to assess. So it's a slight change, but it's going to be really beneficial going forwards. Mm. It sounds, uh, honestly, the roles and everybody's sort of input of the team, it's so incredible. I mean, if you sort of lined everybody up, and sort of said right I wonder what they do <laughs> you'd probably never in the, you know never be able to guess would you no definitely not I love that I love the mystery behind the talent so um, Isabel let's talk about women in engineering and allies the W I E and A you set it up why did you uh, get around to doing that network so it actually came out of a lot of different informal kind of network groups. There are a lot of local people. I cannot take credit for this on my own by any means. Um, but it kind of came about for me as a lack of support for kind of the mid-career females. I joined JLR through a women in engineering sponsorship scheme. And from that, I benefited from meeting the rest of my cohort. There were 10 women that joined that way. And we got a senior female mentor within the business. Um, and I found that really beneficial. And it kind of surprised me that that wasn't open to everyone. Like, Katie will say she joined a different way and didn't get the same experience joining. A lot of the women in JLR are in those kind of middle, mid-career kind of trajectory that don't have the same access to stuff for the early careers to try and get them up and running. 
it kind of just surprised me. I feel like those kind of opportunities needed to be more widely available and they need to extend for longer into your career. And so we kind of got talking to a few people around us to say, right, what do you what do you need? What do we need to be changing? That's kind of where the network mission statement came about was that for us, the issue was in engineering, which is typically more male domain dominated. Um, and it was about being gender inclusive. So this wasn't that the women wanted to turn together and have a women's network. It was about trying to change the culture to be more gender inclusive. And we wanted everyone to have equally enjoyable careers. It wasn't about everyone needed to be the next CEO by any means. It was just feeling engaged, feeling safe, feeling happy. And that's kind of where the network came about. That sounds amazing. And I mean, to set that thing up, to recognize there's a need for it, but then to actually set it up, that's got to be two different animals right there. How do you go about kind of getting it going? As I said, at the start, there was lots of just different local groups kind of having informal networking events and catch ups. And then it kind of got off the ground when I met um, the co-chair, Marta Garcia Santa Maria. She was a body senior manager, a body engineering senior manager. And she was doing something with the graduates in her area. And I was kind of mixing around with some of these local groups. And we kind of got a big launch event ready and had a big conference for like a hundred people attended. And we essentially asked them, what would you want from employee network? What would improve your experience at JLR? Um, and they gave us like a top 10 list of priorities, mentoring, um, uh, networking, storytelling from senior role models, making sure it was really strong from the first launch. They wanted it to be for everyone. It had to be right there in the name that the women engineering and allies, as we keep emphasizing, this really was for everybody. Um, and it, yeah, it took a while to kind of get the business case together and really typical engineering. We wanted to put all the data to back us up as well as our own experiences. Um, but yeah, it kind of organically grew like that out of those informal networks into one cohesive movement. That's wonderful, though. I mean, rather than say there's a need right here, this is what we think we can do. I mean, you've got to go and ask the people in the organisation. Otherwise, you've just got to go back to the drawing board. Like, well, you don't <laughs> so no it sounds wonderful and as you say organic so you can be forever making those improvements and changes can't you absolutely we are constantly asking for feedback trying to check we're on the right path as if it's such a personal thing especially when you talk about any of these diversity inclusion topics um you're not going to have one solution that works for everybody and we've definitely come up against that a few times trying to make sure that we're doing the best for the majority um in which case, in this case, it was a minority, but you know what I'm getting at. Um, okay, majority, I get it. <laughs> so with Katie being on the receiving end then of the W, I, E and A, what was your experience of encountering it? So I joined in an undergraduate scheme, the same as Isabel, but mine wasn't a sponsored scheme, so I didn't really get that link with a senior manager and the mentoring that was available at that time. And I guess to an extent I missed out and I didn't really realize it. Um, so when I came back on the graduate scheme, they have whole sorts of graduate forums that you can experience and get involved with. So I don't know if I necessarily immediately missed the women in engineering network, but upon finishing that graduate scheme and going into that mid career phase as Isabel's discussing, there then wasn't anything else to sort of get involved with. So when I saw that there were women in engineering conferences appearing, I immediately like, leapt to it and went to attend one. So the first conference I attended was What Motivates You? And as I sat there listening to all the speakers, I sort of thought, I want to get involved with this. Like, this is what motivates me. So it all sort of came out of there. Mm -hmm. And Isabel, tell us about We Are JLR. What is that about? So We Are JLR is the umbrella network. So um, in 2018, kind of all of these employee networks that are coming about, ourselves included, um, and they, now we have nine in total employee networks, uh, the Black Asian Minority Ethnicities Network, we have Pride, the Christian Fellowship, the Islamic Society, I'm going to forget some, the Gender Equality Network and North American Drive. Um, and Shine. A, a, so, Shine, thank you. No, I forget somebody. And the Armed Forces Community Network as well. Um, and everyone together kind of realized how much collaboration and kind of common themes of respect and inclusion were across all of these employee networks. And they'd all likewise kind of come organically from the ground up. And we are JLR really brought it all together with the support of diversity and inclusion um, within JLR themselves. And they kind of said, we should be working this as one organic um, network and kind of governance within JLR. And that was really where we got the most support and what fed into getting senior support um within 2019 we are jlr launched we had 
Grant McPherson, who is our Executive Director of Manufacturing, he joined as the exec sponsor for We Are JLR. And then we kicked off in last autumn with an inaugural diversity inclusion conference, which had contributions from all the networks. And it's just been really great to have everyone kind of band together and say, you know what, unconscious bias is an issue for all networks for all the different reasons. Let's all team together and have one training course. And it's having a much bigger impact at JLR by having a simpler, like streamlined approach to get the message out across the company. Because we still suffer from people saying, oh, it's a women engineering network. I, I, I'm not involved. I, I don't tick that box. Um, whereas a lot of the things that would benefit JLR as a whole, likely unconscious bias training, um, they can go out to everybody and it doesn't appear like it's one network or the other. They're of benefit to everyone. Mm. And what about you, Katie? What would you say about that? Yes, I think with the Women in Engineering Network events, they're really great for networking within the Women in Engineering Network community and those who are allies who come along to support us. But with the We Are JLR events, it just opens up even more people across the company to get involved with. It's just really fantastic to be involved and speak to more people on more career paths within the company. I'm glad you said that, you know, sort of like the variety, open to all. You know, I, I'm so proud of growing up in Coventry. I just loved it. I loved everything about it. And I lived in Grange Mouth Road. And then you had um, Middlemarch Road, I think it was, or Cat Martin, one of the two. But I could see Jaguar from my bedroom window. And I could see, you know, just people and the cars and you know I'd sit there and sort of wistfully look out and always loved cars and you know I always wanted to drive quite early on from when I was very very little you know I even took the handbrake off my dad's car when he wasn't looking quick I mean I, I was only five you know I really wanted to drive and um boys wanted to work at Jaguar Land Rover and that was the company that was hiring you know the most and I never came across any girls that even wanted to work there or you know thought it was a good idea or did work there so um we have a question from rachel boynton and she's asking you know what is it actually like to work at jaguar land rover i've been finding it really engaging really challenging um I've always done computational fluid dynamics. I've always worked in quite virtual CAE teams in my time at JLR. Um, so I have quite a office-based computery kind of version of engineering. Um, I find it really hard work, but it's absolutely fantastic. And I like the fact that I can see products on the road at the end of the day. Like I can be like, I contributed to that. I helped sign the foot duct for that. No one else might appreciate that their feet are getting cool, but or warm as needed. But that's, I like the kind of practicality of seeing a final product after all this virtual work. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think definitely. Um, yeah, so definitely JLR being such a massive company, it's really exciting. There's always so much going on. Um, I mean, we have two conferences per year. The other networks have conferences. There's always events to get involved with. Um, the careers themselves, again, so diverse in terms of nature of roles and departments. I really enjoy working on a really big site when I'm not at home. <laughs> um, it's just a really great workplace to be in. Sounds great. How many people work for Jaguar Land Rover? Do you know? So at one point, I think we we're about 40,000 internationally. I believe there's about 8,000 people just at the Gaiden site. Wow, that is amazing. It's such a force and it has such a reputation. Now, um, you've spoken already about the different types of groups there that um, are there for, for women and for women to experience. So Oh, I just, um, you know, think it's great that you've looked at other models, adapted your own, and it is organic. Now, we do have a question um, from Hinane Shayed. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to ask, do Jaguar Land Rover Limited provide opportunities like part-time job or internship for international students? as we are allowed to work only for 20 hours per week. And do they look at, um, is it metal, metallurgical engineer? Have I said that correctly? M-E-T, so metal, urogil. I'm gonna spell it. M-E-T-A-L-L-U-R-G-I-C-A-L. Right. Um, 
<laughs> I'm not 100% metallurgical. Oh, we've had a metallurgy engineer. No, I'm saying that wrong too. Um, I know there's opportunities um, on our website for, I know that's uh, Paul works for us, but the jaguarlandjofcareers.com website um, highlights all the opportunities that are open at the moment. I'm not sure of all the specifics of part-time opportunities that we have at the moment. Someone just said we do have a metallurgical team at JLR. So yes, it is. The department exists. Um, our, I think our placement opportunities for students are normally over summers or over a year starting in June and the applications usually close around November, December. So I'd keep an eye on our website for those but I'm not sure about the part-time aspect of it. Well, thank you to Dee Harris and is it um, Gail Gilliam who have come in with some answers. Um, Dee is saying she works in, as a materials engineer at JLN. Yes, we do have a metal girl team. <laughs> yes, so um, that's good. And, and, Hen and Henin is saying thank you. So that's great. I'm loving all the network that's going on here. <laughs> network. So um, speaking of network, did we cover exactly how many people are in this network? And also, how do they go about joining? Yeah, so there's 430 members of the network at the moment and um, you can join in a myriad of different ways. Um, the biggest one for us is that we have an online community and like a, a chatting and sharing platform and you can join that way to keep up to date with like articles for discussion and online posts and all the upcoming events are shared that way. Um, you can also participate and come to any of the events. So we do two big conferences a year and we do these monthly networking lunches as well or you can join as a committee member. Um, everyone's kind of volunteering their time around their day-to-day -day roles. It's all led by women within engineering. Um, and so you can join that way and have that little bit more interaction with the network as well. Mm. So Katie, why would somebody want to come to one of your events? What are they going to get out of it? So the events are set up to really address the 10 points that Isabel mentioned that were raised at the initial conference. So our monthly lunches, for example, they focus on predominantly networking, but also storytelling. We have skills development. There's a whole range of topics that we include. So every month is a new topic. So as Isabel mentioned, this month has been on reflection at the mid-year point. Last month, we actually discussed awards and the benefits of putting yourself out there and applying for external awards, which is partly why we've applied for this. We wanted to lead by example and put ourselves out there for awards. Um, so there's a really good diverse range of lunches. Um, the biannual conferences are a bit bigger. So we get typically maybe 150 people attending and we get external speakers in. We get speakers in from the other We Are JLR networks. Um, we, get, we had senior sponsors. We sometimes just get people doing storytelling. So this is what my personal experience is like at JLR. So there's a really wide range of things to get involved with. We've been trying to expand that as well. Um, so when we started, a lot of the activity was based at Gaydon. And over the last year or so, we've been trying to recruit um, champions from all the different UK-based JLR sites in to come and join the network, join the committee, um, pick up some of the networking lunches, replicate what they can do and really adapt it for their sites so that we can try and expand our reach that way. So what started from a group of engineers at Gaydon is really trying to get UK-wide at least. I had a question about what you were doing in the last 12 months to advance equality, diversity, inclusion in, in engineering. And I feel you've touched on a lot. <laughs> Is there anything you've left out? <laughs> um, so we've also launched a mentoring scheme. So um, it was initially rolled out to those through the We Are JLR network. And we've currently got 163 people who've put themselves forward to mentor others within the company. So that's really exciting because so for me, when I joined the undergraduate scheme and I didn't have a mentor, I could now go onto this site and effectively say, I'm interested in being mentored in these topics. And you can then filter through those who are willing to be mentors and see what their departments are, what their experiences, any specific um, diversity and inclusion fields they feel particularly allied to. And you can select yourself a mentor that way. So it's really great to have that mentoring scheme out. Um, we also do a lot of outreach. So um, we do a lot of work with local schools. Um, we support, as a company, we support the Furthering Futures campaign where STEM, uh, GCSE and A-level students come onto site for a week and get to really see what it's like to be at JLR. And as a network, we often go and spend an afternoon with them, help on the tours, stop for a lunch and have a chat with the students. So it's really important to us to um, show a diverse range of JLR 
employees to these prospective students as they come around the site. A big one for us this year as well has really been the launch of our allies campaign. So really trying to put out um, some material and some helpful tools that can be used as part of um, people kind of coming up to us going, yes, we support you. What do you want us to do? What do you, I need to be doing? Um, so we've had some of the committee pulling together a bit of research into how to be a good ally. And it's really come together in this kind of three-step campaign we've been launching this year about recognising a situation, because that's the first step. Lots of people don't notice some of the smaller things going on around them. Um, asking respectful questions to check your understanding is the same as someone else's. And then responding appropriately, whether that's at the time or maybe reflecting and coming back to it after the fact. And we've been trying to roll that out across the business. Mm. So you really are just reaching that wider audience. And I mean, you're doing your regular jobs and you're doing this on top. I mean, you must be so passionate about the work and the wanting women to feel included. I mean, it's, it's my hat is off. <laughs> it's band, but it's off <laughs> to you both. And I know it's a, a wider team, but you know, you're here today, so I can only thank you. And just on a side, do, have you ever worked with Cowden Court School to your your recollection at all? Cowden no. Court. Not to my knowledge, but our outreach leads unfortunately aren't in the video at the moment. I'd have to ask one of the two of them. It's my old school. I just want to be being looked after. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's all about me. No. So what have you noticed? Here's a question now from, from me. Because, uh, you know, doing all of these interviews um, for Equal Engineers has been amazing. I've been speaking to men, women, you know, all, everybody in between as well. And it's about sort of recognising stereotypical behaviour. That's what I want to kind of ask you about now. And if you've noticed any in your company since setting up this group. I said there's a lot more awareness and kind of inquisitiveness around diversity and inclusion as a whole since setting up the group. Um, we still have a lot of work to do in removing gender stereotypes um, across engineering and then the business. I think that's true of the industry. Um, and I said it's kind of fair to say we're kind of at the start of the journey. It's only been a couple of years since we've had all these networks around. But for me, there's been a bit of a change to say that this is a little less of a women's group. Um, it's more an understanding that inclusivity is good for everyone, for business, for profitability, all that good stuff. And there's been a bit of a change in the behaviour of people wanting to show support and get involved and a bit of a greater engagement in that way. I guess I just have to echo Isabel, really. Um, I'd say when I've been supporting these events with the network alongside the other We Are JLR networks, probably the top question I get asked is, what can I do to help? How can I support? I understand the message, but I don't know how personally I can improve it. Um, so we're really trying to point people towards the allies pack on our website and saying, look, if you're a manager, can you share this at your team meeting? If you're not a manager, can you still speak to your manager and get it run at a team meeting? Um, we've got the advice out there and it's just really spreading the message and encouraging people to reflect a bit more. Mm -hmm. Reflection is a great word because if we don't sort of reflect upon ourselves, how can we then go out and make, you know, the wonderful changes that need to be made in our environment? And, you know, adversity comes in all different shapes and sizes. You know, are you able to share any adversity that you have come across yourselves, whether it was in the sort of training up, getting into the role, you know, as students or right at JLR? So for me, I don't think I have a, I don't have a standout example, as it were. For me, it's kind of that um, the low level sexist assumptions you might come across at any point through your um, schooling or career with women still being presumed to be the primary caregivers or tasked with the office admin or just having to work that little bit harder to continually justify your experience level um, that might appear insignificant in the moment but over time I fear will lead to women kind of getting tired or frustrated and feeling excluded from having that long career in engineering. So for me I guess similar to Isabel I don't really have a standout moment I guess I could talk about the first moment I really remember it being discussed um, when I was at my first university open day to look at mechanical engineering as a career choice I had another student's parent um, ask why I was there um, and suddenly felt very isolated within this group um, 
I think they might have joked whether I was there to make the tea or not. And I think it was intended as a joke, but it was the first sort of experience of just passing comments as to being a woman in the room at an engineering subject. So um, it's, it's mostly small things for me personally anyway, but um, over time they just really start to wear you down. Mm. But it is those little things, you know, one after another, one after another. And, you know, you don't, what the last thing you want to hear is people saying, oh, you're being a bit sensitive. That's not going to work. You know, at the end of the day, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. And I remember speaking to one of our other nominees and she said, um, you know, in all the meetings, we're you know, on Zoom a lot now these days. And um, little things like um, maybe a, the guy that was heading the meeting say, so welcome, welcome guys, or hello, gentlemen, good to have you here. She's like, hello, I'm in the room, you've got my name, you know, and just sometimes just being spoken over. Have you experienced anything like that? Or are you sort of, you know, you're in the room and you're able to express yourselves? I think hi gents is a definite one that appears a lot. We've done a lot on using gender neutral language and a lot of it doesn't come from a bad place. It is. Engineering has been a male dominated area for so long that and a lot of the time you might just be addressing the, the men. Um, so it's almost habit now for a lot of people. It's just trying to break that, I think. Yeah, because we've definitely had hi gents, hi guys. I've had an email addressed with work I needed to do still addressed to hi gents. Um, they like, do I not need to do it if it's not addressed to me? Um, we, so we, you, we can have that jokey response, but kind of everything we're trying to do with the network is so that the next generation of engineers don't feel they've got to consistently do this and every time kind of be like, actually, we're, we are here. You can address it. There's just gender neutral language they can use. You can use they, you don't need to continue to use he, um, but it's about breaking that habit for a lot of people. Yeah, we're really good at talking about the occupants in the car as if they're all male as well. So you go, oh, when he's driving, when he's sat there, and it's just changing all of these words. Um, I'm really pleased that I hear hi folks a lot more often now than <laughs> gents or um, a lot of people are aware and they're changing how they phrase things. So it is, a, it is really nice that you can notice the change in people's language. I've always been a peeps person. You know, hey peeps, you know. Yeah. <laughs> person personally because yeah with high guys even though guys and girls da, 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 they, even though guys seems friendly to women as well it's not right you only say guys you gotta say gals you know mm. so, i've had a i sorry to your exact point i it's also interesting when um it's maybe someone's not english isn't someone's first language i've definitely had a chat with a colleague trying to explain why guys was more okay than gents um, and it was because they were still gendered when they were translated and they couldn't understand why one was more neutral than the other. So, yeah, it was just that extra level of, oh, yeah, if English isn't your first language either, then this gets a whole lot more complicated and trying to have a clear why one's OK and one's the other. And, like use high all as just a safe bet. Yeah. And, you know, this is brilliant, though, isn't it? Just, you know, trying to engage the brain before you speak and obviously we don't know everybody's experiences we you know we don't know what they've been through so it is being mindful and that just takes just a little bit more effort so you know it's great and what about the senior leadership um, in your organization um, are they supporting the employee network yes absolutely um as I said, we all started from kind of grassroots and kind of worked our way up. But really within the last year, it's been fantastic because we've had a lot of the senior leadership come on board as sponsors for the employee networks. So ourselves, we had Ian Hoban join us, who's director of Powertrain, um, only within the last year. And then we had Grant McPherson, who was executive director of manufacturing, join as sponsor for We Are JLR overall. And what that's done is just kind of give us that open channel right to the top of the business to discuss what we're doing, why it's important. Um, it's had them come speak at events for us, which just adds that level of gravitas to say, actually, this is important. It is almost business critical, like everything else. It's not a nice to have. Um, and it's helped filter some of the messages that they come from the top down and get that same level of importance as other business priorities, as well as coming from the grassroots up. And it's hopefully a two-pronged attack or approach that will bring it all together. So I guess in addition to that, all of our board of management are being reverse mentored by members of the WRJLR network committees. So um, a member of our Women in Engineering and Allies Committee is reverse mentoring one of the board. So she's able to tell him from personal experience what it's like to be a woman in engineering at their company 
so it's really great to be able to have that direct conversation and changing attitudes and so that we can do this learning from the top down as well wonderful stuff right i've got some questions for you and um, rebecca archer what do you think can be done to inspire a new generation of female engineers a oh, good question um we're doing a lot at the moment we're trying to get out to schools and actually really make sure that the people that are going to these kind of outreach events with the careers fairs and um school open days and those kind of activities really are being represented by uh, um, women as well as men and trying to make sure that representation is kind of there because we get a lot of comments about not being able to see even from our level up into leadership not being able to see people like themselves and that kind of makes it feel like you can't get there um and i think that's the same for children kind of and studying as well as that they want to see people like themselves in roles in engineering roles and really say that well i can do that because i can see someone like me doing that too um so we've been really working hard to kind of break the gender stereotypes and really put out all the different roles and show all the different women and men across the business that are doing lots of different things within engineering, really showing the scope to break, not just the gender stereotypes, but also the stereotypes around engineering. Like um, I am not a mechanic by any means, um, but that is still a perception for a younger audience. We did a great campaign actually this time last year, um, which was going into primary schools and asking children to draw an engineer um, and the number of, young children who drew men and um charlotte cooper went out for us from the women engineering network and they would not believe that charlotte had helped contribute to the range rover by any means um and it's that kind of belief that i think we need to change and therefore hopefully encourage a few more to get involved there are a lot of really good campaigns out there as well so wise recently had the one in a million campaign so um that's celebrating just over a million female employees working in the stem industry so there's all sorts of things out there where you can see the range of women who are saying, I work in engineering, I work in a STEM subject. So it's really great that that's represented. Brilliant stuff. Um, Deborah Masetta, she, uh, she says, first of all, hi, hope you're well. What representation do you have from the powertrain teams? And do you work with other international charities such as Grow a Girl in Act for Africa or Engineers Without Borders? So representation from the power team, we've got representation from I think most of the engineering functions across JLR. Um, I don't have the breakdown of the NAM membership, but we I know we're broad spanning across most of the engineering functions because when I get chatting to people at events, I'd be amazed how many different areas come along. Um, and we're kind of working on getting that feedback to try and tackle engineering as a whole. Um, I don't know if we're working with any of those charities at a company level. The network isn't working with anyone out externally at the moment that I'm aware of. But I'm always looking for new opportunities and new research, really trying to do that benchmarking and learning to really try to change the industry as a whole, not just dragging a Land Rover. That's a nod. <laughs> That's a nod from Gabby. And a big thank you from Deborah. And Rebecca Archer wants to know what qualities would a prospective female engineer need to have to hold ground with male colleagues? Oh, interesting. Um, be yourself, be authentic. Um, I don't think you need to worry about, oh, you shouldn't worry about holding ground with your male colleagues. Um, I think just that self-belief, that confidence is really important. I know I spent far too long dealing with imposter syndrome and being a physicist coming into engineering, feeling like I didn't know what everyone was talking about. Um, just get involved, I think, and really throw yourself into it. And your passion for what you're doing and hard work will kind of get you all the recognition and ground you need, really. Yeah, we're, we're not looking for people to try and change themselves to be in this role. It's if you're a female engineer, you're a female engineer. There's no specific qualities as such that you need to be trying to express or give across. You can only be yourself. I think the point we're going to get to one day is when we're just called engineers. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the ultimate goal is that none of these networks are needed. Like everyone's treated equally with and fairly. And yeah, I think for me, that would be, I don't know how many years away that will be, but I think when none of the networks are needed because we're not seeing a difference and everyone is just an engineer. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Do you like the way I slip that in? We will be called engineers. I feel like I'm part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Without getting 
change and that feel I'm part of it. Because this is it, it's about in inclusivity. It makes you want to be involved. And it's like, I've just been really honored to speak to, like I say, a variety of people who are our um, nominees. So I can't thank you enough. And um, just very quickly, opportunities. I mean, we, we had a question earlier about, you know, what opportunities could be there for him as a graduate. Now that you're in, do you feel that there are lots of opportunities in your current company to find a, a role that's really challenging for you? Yes, so um, within JLR, it's such a large company. There's always so much available. Um, we've got a variety of departments. I mean, as we said, we've got about 40,000 people. There's so many different roles being covered. We've also are working internationally. So if people want to relocate, that option's there. Um, people, I know people who used to work at Gaiden who now work at JLR China, for example. So there's all sorts of opportunities out there for you to look for. We've also got loads of training and resources available. We've got a lot of e-learning available to us. So it, yeah, lots and lots of opportunities. And that's what the networks are for really, to kind of introduce you to other engineers, highlight role models in other engineering areas, really put you in touch and make you aware of what else is available as well as developing your own skills and giving you the confidence to encourage you to pursue those and if that's what you wanted to do really go after it so we've had lots of fantastic questions thank you all to everybody that's come into the chat and my final question because we're going to finish in a couple of minutes would be what would it mean for you to win the award in your category so we'd be really really delighted to win the award in our category um, the excitement within the committee just to be nominated for it was absolutely ridiculous. We were so pleased. Um, as we've mentioned, our committee are all volunteers and doing this around their day jobs. So it's really a massive pat on the back to get some recognition for this hard work. Um, it takes a lot of time to plan these events and to host these events. So we'd just be really delighted. Yeah, it's just fantastic, especially to be nominated alongside, I've been reading about Outlook UK and PRISM as well, um, and there's just so much we can all learn from each other. It's been great to see the movement and enthusiasm for DNI across the whole industry. Ah, oh, fantastic. So, um, we were out of time. I can't believe it's gone so quick. <laughs> These interviews are always like on, on roller skates. They go so fast. But thank you both, Katie and Isabel, for taking time to come and speak to us today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> You're so very welcome. So um, that's it. As I say, we're all out of time. Thank you again so much to everybody who posted a question. And thank you for joining us and gleaning so much from um, what these wonderful women are doing to make way for the new engineers of the future. So um, that's it for us. If you have any questions following and you didn't have a chance today or you've, like once we finish, you're like, oh, I meant to ask, then you can go to outreach at equalengineers.com. And do remember to share the link to this webinar to, for everybody to see once it's up and running. So for now, enjoy the sunshine, stay safe everyone and take care. And a big thank you to Frasier who's been working very hard behind the scenes. Thank you.